Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 2 talking about testing throughout the SDLC and continuing ahead with our same segment that is 2.2 test levels and test types. And as a part of it, we are still continuing with 2.2.1 and discussing in more detail of the test levels. As we have many test levels, we are talking about them one by one. And today we are picking up is acceptance testing. Well, when it comes to acceptance testing, certainly this particular level is dedicated to the business users or the business itself and certainly conducted in a context of accepting the product back from the development company as you place the order during the requirement gathering phase. At the end, the system is handed over back to the business saying that the product is built as per the given requirements. Now, it's a very common practice that when you go and buy some products outside, even in the market, you do try to give it a testing round to make sure that the product is working fine and then you make the payment for it. Simple, if you go to buy an air conditioner or maybe you know you any other product like a microwave oven or refrigerator, they will just plug it on and let me, let me show you that, okay, this is working fine or not. Or indeed you ask them that, can I just probably check that if it is still working? In fact, forget about the heavy equipments, you are talking about even a simple bulb, you do go and ask them to check it before you buy it because it's worth something, right? As you make payment for a huge thing which is being built here, certainly the amount is also being huge and every single thing counts a lot. And that's where it is very important to conduct the acceptance testing. Well, that was very logical thing, but technically speaking, it's responsibility of the customer to acknowledge the product. And in order to acknowledge the product, the requirement should be met. No matter, a development company can claim anything that we have met all your required expectations, but the business expectations sometime may not be understood. And that's where the deviations may observed. And that's where a person like customer will also conduct a round of testing to make sure that all the requested requirements have been really implemented or there were few which were missed out or maybe misimplemented. And that should be corrected at this point of time. So when we talk about acceptance testing, it basically focuses on validation and on demonstrating the readiness for deployment, which means that the system fulfills the user business needs. Ideally, acceptance testing should be performed by the intended user, but again, not being very, very technically meaning that, it's not necessary that acceptance testing should be completely done by the real users, but initially it will be conducted in by the, dev, uh, the owners of the product, like customer, and later, if required, we may ask the real users also to conduct the same. So it's not really mandatory that the whole acceptance testing should be done by the real users, okay? That's not true. So when it comes to acceptance testing, certainly the main forms of acceptance testing include user acceptance testing, which is our functional level testing to accept the product functionally. Then second is of course, operational acceptance testing, which is more of like, can it be deployed in an environment and can be executed, installed or not? So the deployment part and working in the target environments is basically checked at the operational and the functional transactions. Not only the basic requirements, but whether a person can actually do end-to-end -end transaction, more of like end-to-end uh, -end functionality can be done or not. And that is what we measure as a part of operational acceptance. And third, that's not always true that a product needs functionality alone. Sometimes we do have contractual and regulatory acceptance testing also being performed here because some of your products may go through the regulations and we must be fulfilling that also. For example, if you're talking about embedded systems, your cell phones, the laptops, or even automotives like automobiles, car, bikes, two-wheelers. So they all have to go through a regulatory standard check. And that's where the regulations are also supposed to be measured here because if in case that is a failure, then the product will not go into the market at all, right? Because that would be not meeting the desired expectations. So put together, acceptance testing is just not limited to the base functionalities, but deals with everything else, including functional, non-functional, standards, regulatories, and whatnot. Also, to add here, the acceptance testing is conducted in two different sub-levels. Now sub-levels, basically we talk about alpha testing and beta testing where alpha testing is different than beta testing. So initially the journey begins with alpha testing where the application is tested by the customer who placed the order and the objective 
is to accept the product if everything is working. That means to give a sign off to the business or the development organization from the business, right? So alpha testing is conducted in the pre-prod environments itself. That means it's not a real world testing. That means whatever environment we have used to test the system, the same place will be used for alpha testing by the customer. And the objective is to accept the product by the business, right? But on the other hand, if I talk about beta testing, beta testing is conducted in the real environment. That means the target intended environment and conducted by the real users. And the objective is to collect the feedback from the real users. Here, the objective is not to understand or test the functionalities. Here, we want to listen back from the real users that what do you think whether this product is really good for you or not. And moreover, things like textual, visibility, color, accessibility, and all can be seen from the real user point of view. For example, you can talk about the color of the background and the text are matching, so I cannot see the text. Now, that's not functionality, but some of the visuals which can come from the real user. Sometimes the font could be very small and may not be readable for some of the users, then I would have to take care of that, right? So I want to really feel the real user shoes before I go and roll it out. Yes, it's very important to remember beta testing is not a post-release event. It is a pre-release event. And it is generally for the duration of three months to six months of time. And that's actually enough to get to know the pulse check of the real users. So depending on the size of the application, the duration will vary between three months to six months of time. And this is very, very useful to conduct beta testing. But sometimes the products are very difficult to be shared with the real user. For example, we can't ask real users to test an elevator, escalator, aeroplanes, or some things like ATM, which is automated teller machine. So where human money and life is involved, we ask the professionals to behave like real users and then conduct beta testing. It's not really necessary that beta testing should be conducted blindly for all the products, but if you think this involves a very wide range of audience, then beta testing would be very, very helpful, just like how it helped Microsoft to know before releasing that Windows Vista will be a failure, Windows 8 will be a failure, right? So you can deep dive into that. If you need to know more, you can always get in touch with me. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.